Good morning. I know some of you are still sleeping, but join the crowd. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together as God's wonderful people. We gather together as we continue to pray for one another and lift up one another. Continue to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to continue to make a difference in this community in which we live as we proclaim the name of Jesus Christ and what he's done for each and every one of us. We gather this morning as God's people to worship. Hymn number 314 in the garden. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them and to touch them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love towards each and every one of us that you were willing to send your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to become that perfect sacrifice 
to die on an old rugged cross and shed his blood that we might stand righteous before you. Lord, we thank you for being concerned about each and every one of us. That you love not only one of us, but that you love the whole world. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to lay down his life on that old rugged cross for each and every one of us, that through him we might have life and have it abundantly and have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts, to guide us, to direct us, to help us, to be all that you would have us to be. Heavenly Father, may your Spirit draw us closer to you, closer to one another, that we might love one another as you have loved us, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those that need your touch. Heavenly Father, be with each and every one of them as you meet their needs this day. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. But Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, you know each and every one of our needs. Lord, we just ask that you might meet those needs today. And we'll always give you the praise and the glory. Heavenly Father, thank you for the prayer that your son Jesus prayed on many occasions. We pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 163, Ask Ye What Great Things I Know.
our Psalter reading is found on page 856 as we read from Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In your faithfulness give ear to my suffocation. In your righteousness answer me. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one is righteous before you. For enemies have pursued me, they have crushed my life to the ground. They have made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. I remember the days of old, and I meditate on all that you have done. I muse on what your hands have wrought. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Therefore, my Make haste to answer me, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who look down to the pit. In the morning, let me hear of your steadfast love, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me. By way of announcements, on Saturday, March the 23rd, we will have the Easter egg hunt from 1 to 3 in the Fellowship Hall. And then on March the 24th is Palm Sunday. The children will lay palms at the altar during the worship service. And then on Easter Sunday morning, it, our service will be at 11 o'clock at the regular time. I have about uh, 500 collards and some uh, mustard and some turnip greens, and all of them are fixing the boat. So if any of you want any mustard greens or turnip greens or, or collards, they're free. All you got to do is open the gate, go in, and take a knife and just cut whatever you want and get whatever you want. Uh, uh, but they they're beginning to flower out this week, and so you're welcome to them if any of you would like to have some. Or if you know anybody that needs some, you're welcome to take two of them. Oh. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day and this opportunity to serve you and to be a part of your great and wonderful kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that you have called me to serve. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every gift that's been given this morning. Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in this community and the world around about us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that continue to give week after week. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless them in a mighty way. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Would you stand for the doxology?
This morning from the Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning with verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believeth in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him 
shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes unto the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God, the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these are your precious children who have come to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is Christ must be lifted up. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up. You remember as Moses led the children out of the land of Egypt, they came into the territory of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites fought them and took away some of the children of Israel. And the Israelites prayed to God and called out to God for help. And God allowed the Israelites to defeat the Canaanites and to destroy them. And they called the place Ormont. And they left Ormont and went by from the Mount of Or to the Red Sea as they were going to Edom. And as they were going to Edom, the people became restless. And they began to mock God and they began to mock Moses and said, Oh, you brought us out of the land of Egypt and you brought us here to die. We have no bread, we have no water. All we have is this little light bread that you give us. And so God answered them with some fiery servant, servants. And when the serpents would sting them, they would die. And many of them began to die. They came to Moses and said, Moses, we have sinned against God and we've sinned against you. Help us out. And so Moses prayed to God. And God told Moses, he said, go and build a serpent out of brass and put it up on a pole and lift it up. And when the people are bitten by that serpent, have them to go and look up at the pole and they will live. And so as the people were bitten by those fiery serpents, they went and they looked at the pole and they lived. John understood what it was all about. As John looks back, he knew how important it had been 
for Jesus Christ to be lifted up at the cross of Calvary because John knew that the sacrificial system did not work. It only covered the sin. It never would forgive your sin. And you would always live with that sin. But Christ Jesus was offered up as that perfect Lamb of God as a sacrifice on Calvary's cross that through his shed blood we can now stand before God and we would stand in Christ's righteousness and God would see Christ's righteousness in each and every one of us so that we would have life and have it abundantly and have it eternally. But he also gave us that gift of salvation so that we could have that assurance of eternal life. But he gave us the Holy Spirit to come and to live and dwell in our hearts to help us to be what God wants us to be, to keep us in line so that we can do the will of God, so that we can make a difference in this world in which we live. He gave us everything that we need on Calvary's cross. He gave us so that we could have a victorious life. Why would God send his son to die for us? The scripture says, for God so loved. Did God love simply the Jews? No. Did God love just the white people? No. Did he love the black or brown or red or yellow? Alone? No. The scripture says that for God so loved the world that he gave. He so loved the world. That includes you and that includes me. Because God loved each and every one of us and he wanted us to have life and he wanted us to have it abundantly and he wanted us to have it eternally. He was willing to to send his son Jesus Christ to come to this earth, to be born in a manger, to call his disciples from all walks of life, and then tell his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem. I will suffer and I will die, and on the third day I will rise again. On three different occasions, he told his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem. I must die, and on the third day I will rise again. Jesus knew that it was necessary for him to become that perfect Lamb of God, to offer up his life as a sacrifice on Calvary's cross. You see, it's easy for us to try to get to Resurrection Sunday without going to the cross. But folks, we can't get to Resurrection Sunday without the cross. Because it's there at the cross, Jesus did everything and made it possible for each and every one of us to have that life and to have it eternally. Lent is not about giving up a cup of coffee for 40 days or giving up chocolate for 40 days. Lent is about making a sacrifice, willing to give of yourself. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, take up the cross and follow me. If you lose your life for my sake, you shall find it. 
What does a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? This morning, Lynn is about us making a sacrifice, willing to give up ourselves, willing to deny ourselves so that we might follow Christ and make a difference in the world in which we live. The scripture said that Jesus says that he came into the world not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. And those that believe in him is not condemned, but those who do not believe in him is condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. Today we live in a evil world. Today we live in a world of bitterness and hatred. And there's a partisan world in which we live. God is calling on us to bring light in the midst of the darkness to be the light of the world and to let that light shine. And so that's why it's so important for us to go to the cross and remember what Christ Jesus did for each and every one of us on the cross at Calvary and what His precious blood did for each and every one of us that we might have that life that we might take that life into the world and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us so that we can make a difference in this world. I've never seen this country as bad as it is today. We need Jesus for sure. We need him to come and live and dwell in our hearts and we need to be willing to make that sacrifice to give of ourselves so that we can tell those that do not know Christ they may claim to know him but he says if you know him then you will live as the light in the midst of the darkness but he says men love the darkness more than they do the light that's why we need to make that sacrifice so that we can be that light to those that are still walking in darkness. It's important for us as we move towards Resurrection Sunday to remember as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up. Today we remember the cross for the way of the cross leads home. I must need go by the way of the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. When I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Peace died, the old rugged cross. Folks, this morning, it's about the cross and what Christ Jesus did for us. It's about God and how much he loved each and every one of us. That he was willing to allow his son, Jesus Christ, to lay down his life on that cross for each and every one of us. Today is the day that we need to make that sacrifice so that we can make that difference in this world in which we live. May Christ dwell in each and every one of our hearts. May the Spirit of God live within each and every one of our hearts to guide us so that we might love one another as he has loved us, that we might reach out to one another and make that difference in one another's lives. When I surveyed the wondrous cross, first, second, and last verse, as we sing together, 298.
Heavenly Father, as we stand at the foot of the cross and we look up and we remember what your son Jesus Christ did for each and every one of us as he was willing to allow himself to die as that perfect sacrifice and shed his blood that we might stand righteous before you, that we might have that life and have it abundantly and have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, help us. May your spirit move within each and every one of our lives that we might be willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to make that difference in this world in which we live. Heavenly Father, use each and every one of us in a mighty way. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.